Back here in Cincinnati, the World Ultimate Club Championships continue. It is the fourth round of day number one and a huge matchup in the women's division. Seattle Riot, the two-time reigning World Ultimate Club Champions, winning in 14 in Lecco, 18 here in Cincinnati, taking on the Australian team Ellipsis from Melbourne. Good afternoon, everybody. Evan Lepler alongside Theo Wan. It's great to have you with us. This is a marquee matchup, Theo. Riot has so much history, but it's clearly in rebuilding mode. With that said, they have a lot of young talent going for their third straight world title. Speaking of their coach, they're in discovery mode, trying to be in discovery with these, all these fresh faces, Abby Heckel being one of them, and someone to watch out for previously playing with mixtape. So for them, they want to discover themselves and integrate the aforementioned Abby Hecko. If you watch any college ultimate, you would have seen Hecko dominate for Washington Element and something to keep an eye on there. Well, this Ellipsis team might actually be the favorites coming into this game. They won 15-7 earlier today over Fusion. Riot needed a, a real great second half to come back and beat the Blueberries. That was a, uh, a win for... Riot, the number one seed, over the five seed in the pool from New Zealand. So it'll be a different test here today. And Ellipsis has six of the seven women from the Australian World Games team. As we look at Abby Hecko, her first year on Riot, she played Seattle mixtape in the past. Just a dynamic young talent. And, and one of many dynamic young talents on the Seattle squad. They bring back six players that won the World Club Championship in 2018, but a very different feel here in 22. And you mentioned rebuilding, but I would say it's also part of the restocking of talent in the Seattle area, Evan. And it's great to see that. And looking at Ellipsis, uh, talking to their head coach earlier before the game, taking away Riot's first look, making things uncomfortable for the Riot handlers, taking them out of their pole plays. That's going to be a key for them here today. And of course, Cat Phillips, one of the best players in the world, going to have to do a lot of things for Ellipsis for them to be successful in this game. It's a hot Sunday afternoon here on the first full day of competition at Worlds. Just looked at the weather app. It said feels like 96. There is a pretty stiff breeze that is comforting to uh, try and keep things cool without the breeze. It is real hot. But uh, the Australians, it's their winter right now, but uh, they have a lot of players who are not strangers to this stage and Steve Wright is their head coach, Theo. He really thinks that they've got a great chance to contend for a championship here. And even talking with him earlier, going out on a limb and saying a non-North American team going to take the title is uh, his prediction. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. Right now, it's this first game. they got to take care of business here. You and uh, we'll to, see how it goes. You don't need to be a cryptographer to know who he's talking about when he refers to a non-North American team. I watched a little bit of Medellin Revolution, although they really are like the Harlem Globetrotters right now because they added Lev Kowalczyk yep. and Mish Phillips and Claire Chastain. They are a who's who of talent. Here we go, Ellipsis in the black. The seven time reigning Australian national champions, although they split teams this past spring, basically X and Y built two even teams. And of course they were named after punctuation marks. It was. Ellipsis ampersand and ellipsis asterisk. Ampersand beat asterisk 15-14 in the final at Aussie Nationals. A quick huck. Cat Phillips to the end zone right on target. And a perfect strike. Eva Weatherall has the opening score for the Aussies. You got to feel good if you're an ellipsis fan in the audience. Riot putting on a zone look to start things off. But ellipsis able to deal with it and... Talked about Cat Phillips at the top of the broadcast, and you see why right there. World Games has also played for the Toronto Sixers, and another former Sixers player to watch out for is Anushka Beaudry, who's also playing for this Ellipsis squad, Evan. Yeah, that's a real intriguing thing, you know, especially when the Sixers are playing adjacent to us against Yaka. I was joking, if things aren't going well at halftime here, she could just run over there and jump in the Toronto squad. Eva Weatherall, Talented player from New Zealand, big receiver for the O-line. Scoring the opening goal on the dime from Cat Phillips. And you see in the purple University of Washington hat, kind of a double agent. Amanda Kostick with her Seattle roots is an assistant coach 
for Ellipsis. And she has either played with or coached the majority of these Seattle Riot players. So that's an interesting wrinkle in this matchup, especially you see her giving the scouting report to the D-line as they get ready to pull. I mean, you see this all the time in the ultimate world, Theo, with players going with different teams, teammates guarding each other. At work. Like, there's so many connections, but there's certainly an interesting flavor with Caustic going against Riot. Steph Lim feeds it downfield for Maddie Grassi. There's no Shira Stern today for Riot. She's not here yet. Claire Dunn, former great player out of Tufts, also not with the Seattle squad as of yet. A floater hung on to by Idy. Gadu back to Idy. Charlie, one of the six players that was on Riot in 2018 that's still on the team. He's chatting with their star Serge Griffiths earlier. She's now with Fury and the turnover on the goal line will set up Ellipsis for a break chance. This is your chance right now for the Aussies. Going with those different looks, as you mentioned, defensively. So Caustic, knowing a lot of these players, you're going to expect that. Right now, let's see if they can punctuate this uh, turnover with a first point break, at least on their defensive line. We're going to try to mention every punctuation mark by the end of the broadcast. That is the goal, Evan. Of course, Ellipsis became a international phenomenon in 2015 as the deep shot goes up not to the end zone but sally you to the end zone for the score two nothing melbourne as sally you who played a lot of great defense in the world game semis and finals did not touch the disc in those games gets the early break for australia also named to the national team in 2020 and collecting the score there for Ellipsis and that's the start you want and hopefully all the Australian fans watching enjoying what they're seeing so far and hoping that break train continues here as this match moves forward. I have to wonder, I was on the air earlier this morning calling the Ellipsis men at 9 a.m. Eastern here which I believe is 11 p.m. in Melbourne. I, I wonder how many folks watch that game Went to bed around 12.30 and then woke up for the 5 a.m. local time start of the Ellipsis women. Evan, you got to grab some tea, some breakfast, and strap in for a great match here. It's so nice to be back at a Worlds tournament. I know you're enjoying it. You were around the field scouting some different teams and just some teams just unknown. You don't know what their rosters are going to look after a couple of years off and just not having that as much world's competition. And to see the familiar faces, Theo, walking around the field, it, it really feels like a reunion for the ultimate world. And hopefully it'll be done safely and, and everyone will be healthy at the end of it. You have to think about that. But uh, here's Jessica Spaulding as they send her the disc to her and she'll disc to Sharon Sal. And Riot not looking all that sharp early. 3-0 Ellipsis. Georgia Egan Griffiths, Griffiths, the quick dish. And that is a heck of a start. We talked about giving away different looks or showing different looks from the start. For Ellipsis taking away that first throw. And we saw a bit more of a zone look there. And it caused a turnover right away near Riot's end zone. And as you mentioned, you can't draw up a better start if you're Ellipsis. They have title aspirations and they want to take down the number one seed in their pool and starting it hot right now. Book ends for Sally Yu. She's fired up. Back to back breaks for Australia. Or Sally Yu has experience playing in the United States. She went to Princeton. Played at Princeton from 2012 to 2016. That's where she started playing ultimate and certainly became an important member of the Aussie World Games team that took the silver medal just eight days ago, Theo, in Alabama. That's something I've had to think about as well, Evan, is some of these players, double duty, right? Playing World Games, then staying potentially 
and uh, you know, foregoing their jobs, families, and those things to play two high-level ultimate tournaments. So have to think about what that does to a person's body and their mental state as well. And one of the big takeaways from watching Ultimate here today is this is a very different feel than the World Games. I mean, obviously the games are longer, you're playing multiple games in a day, you have more players on the team, depth matters, and Riot just can't connect right now. Weatherford, her dish to Godot was incomplete. And there's a pick to halt the play right now. I mean, this is a, a one-sided affair at the moment with Ellipsis just in charge. Ellipsis storming out. And if they can cash in this other break, especially not giving up a turnover on this defensive point, have to wonder if Coach Okada, Casey Okada from Riot's going to call a timeout to maybe settle down some of the nerves of the young squad. I know, as we mentioned on the top, integrating some new pieces. So we'll see how it turns out here on this point. Meehan feeds it for Tracy Chong. Two of the three Chong sisters on this Ellipsis team. Julie and Tracy. It's also Steph who played with her two sisters on the 2019 U24 Aussie national team. The max that a pick can come in them is six anyway. So okay. saying stalling six. Okay. All right. <coughs> Palmer on the mark. And a floater. Snagged by Mian. And to the end zone for Eunice Chung. But hang on. Not so fast, Evan. No, it's oh, going to be a goal. No, there There's a pick in the middle of the field, which did not impact the play. And Seattle Riot has had a disastrous start. That's three straight breaks in addition to the turnover free hold, and it is 4 nothing ellipsis. Talking to Riot player Julia Snyder earlier, Evan, talked about how they went up and then down in their game against Blueberries, had to come back. Going to have to do it once again in this game and find that internal fortitude and resilience. Uh, it's a good test for Riot right now to see how they bounce back. Looks like a timeout has been called, Evan, as I uh, talked about in the earlier point, as they try to settle some things down. Inside the huddle, Steve Wright, the Tasmania resident. Down, push down, like keep on making an every pass fight. We're going to be person here. We're going to be person. We're going to be um, in a cold line here as well. But really importantly, on our defensive transition, making sure that we're stretching long from that hand. Let's go. Has to be considered a dream start. Ellipsis is the two seed in the pool, but took care of business convincingly against Canada Fusion earlier today. And an even more dominant start against Riot. And you see Casey Ikeda. It's, it's a little strange not to see Andy Lovesith or Gwen Ambler or Rory Titcomb. And obviously there's been a huge turnover with the Seattle team. And you think about eight years ago in Lecco, Serge Griffith was the best player in the tournament. It's one of the big reasons why they won. Four years later, in Griffith's last tournament with Riot before she joined Fury, I think it was Griffith's one of the MVPs, though Jack Verju was unbelievable for Riot in that tournament too. Jack here playing with mixtape. At the same time though, Theo, this Riot roster is littered with intriguing names. I mean, players who have been world champions like Steph Lim and Charlie Idy and Sam Rosenberg and Julia Snyder and Shira Stern and the decade and a half Riot veteran Alyssa Weatherford, but then they add in a bunch of University of Washington's top players from recent years. And y y you see the pieces, but obviously they are not put together as of yet. Hoping to turn around this offensive point here, Evan, and Finished sixth in 2021 at the USA Ultimate National Championships and looking to build on that both here uh, at WUC and, uh, and at Nationals later in the fall. I've heard a lot of people use the word WUC today. It's not something I've ever said, but it seems to be catching on in the community. Are you going to use it today, Evan, is what, I'm, is what I want to know. I, you know, I'm not sold on it yet, but I feel like if I hear more people talk about it, it's got to be a thing as Neil gets the block on the under. Mara Neal from Wellington, New Zealand. Sally Yu, mighty involved on the 
Aussie offense after the turn. And a great layout block from Abby Hecko to perhaps swing the momentum, we shall see. That's the first ellipsis turnover of the game. And a reminder of what Abby Hecko can do. A highlight reel player for Element and bringing that over to the club scene in the women's division now after, as we talked about, playing with mixtape. And mixtape in this tournament as well. Lots of Seattle representation. Sockeye out there. Haven't had a chance to watch them play, Evan. It's overwhelming, all the ultimate that is going on. But yeah, in the last round, I was watching some of Revo. I saw a little bit of Fury, saw Brute Squad, saw Phoenix. Saw the, the Flying Angels burn team that was uh, from Switzerland getting beaten by Columbia Revolution, but some familiar American names like Callahan winner Jasmine Childress and Callahan top five finalist Caitlin Weaver. So you never know who you're going to see pop up on a certain squad. Yeah, when you look at that Revolution squad, you're expecting just to see uh, Colombian players and World Games players, but as we talked about, some different people added and uh, adding some firepower, hoping for that world's title that they uh, couldn't achieve there in 2018. The, I'll, I'll be honest, there was something a little strange seeing Lev Kowalczyk in a Revolution jersey. I'm like, this this isn't fair, this isn't right. Uncontested defensive foul would be coming in stalling one. But then you saw Mish Phillips there too, and Claire Chastain's not here today, but I expect to get her later in the tournament. That disc caught on the second effort. Sow then floats it into the wind, and Cat Phillips reads it best. How much fun is it to watch Cat Phillips play, Theo? She's been doing it for a very long time, Evan, and quarterbacking this defensive line right now. And what a luxury, as we see a pick called, to have multiple Worlds Games player on your defensive line as well to help quarterback things on the turn and, and power your D-line offense. Yeah, Cat playing in a deep point here because they've had three straight breaks. Deep shot, Patterson just out of her reach. Getting that 5-0 start would have been huge for Ellipsis and they still have an opportunity right now with their defense. Riot that one throw earlier popping up, two throws actually popping up on that last possession. So we'll see if they can adjust to the win here going right to left on your screen. And it's something of a crosswind. And Riot again turns it over near their goal line. Three turns for the Riot O on this point. Georgie Egan Griffiths calmly strolling over to the disc. The Melbourne native picks up, quickly hits Phillips. And then Egan Griffiths shakes free. It's 5 nothing as she beats Abramovich for the fourth consecutive ellipsis break. I'm gonna take a show of hands from the audience, Evan, if they saw this 5-0 start coming in this game. I don't think many people expected this, but nonetheless, this is what has happened so far. Ellipsis coming out with some different defensive looks as we've talked about. Heckle making that highlight reel play for Riot, but not able to punctuate or score a point right now. And that throw popping up, allowing Cat Phillips to go under it, and then their offense was ready to go from that point on. So Evan right in some dire circumstance right now, but of course, lots of game left. Lots of game left. And they did come behind in their first game today, as you said. When you mentioned the sixth place finish for Riot at Nationals last year, that was you know, somewhat fulfilling expectations. But you think about the history of this program. I mean, they haven't made semis since 2018. They made the semis at Nationals 18 of the previous 19 years. Advancing to the finals on 11 of those 18 occasions. Winning two national titles. It's always been kind of strange how they've won the two national titles back in 04 and 05. Always been in the mix, always the bridesmaids against Fury, it seemed. Lost a brute squad in a tight game in finals in Rockford in 16. And a stone cold drop from Yadama. Meehan flips it downfield. And just beautiful disc movement. It's like one team's playing against the wind and the other isn't. 
No one was cutting. Is that going to float long enough? It is. She got it. She's in bounds. And Ellipsis continues to party here in Cincy. What a catch by Julie Chong. Julie Chong keeping her body in bounds to make that grab. You mentioned multiple Chong sisters on this team. And this is just unprecedented, Evan. Right now, 6-0 start rolling over after the catch. But athletic play from Chong, another break and a drop in the middle of the field for Riot and things just not getting going right now for Seattle. And they're gonna have to find it within themselves to turn things around here, sending out different line combinations as we see Steph Lim back on the field here for Riot. And uh, just gonna have to figure something out right now, Evan, as it's 6-0. The textbook definition of throwing somebody open there. And yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't going to say that I was stunned at 3-0 or 4-0, but this 6-0, five straight breaks, Riot's inability to complete multiple strings of passes multiple times is truly stunning. And their offense has just really struggled to get some flow right now and just feel like they're moving and a drop hurts them, a popped up throw hurts them. So once they get that offensive point, I think they'll be able to feel a little bit and feel themselves a bit and, and feel okay, but it's going to have to start right here. I mean, for so many years at Nationals in the U.S., it was Fury and Riot in the final. My colleague Megan Tormey has said for so many years, Nationals was just you go play, you have fun, you go to the party, and then you wake up Sunday and watch Fury play Riot in the final. That was just what you did. And to see Fury last round be up 10-0, and to see Riot here be down 6-0, it is staggering. Alyssa Weatherford has been a part of this program since 2007 and has not, I dare say, ever fallen behind 6-0 in a game before today. And Ellipse is coming out with another zone look here and really trying to stymie some of that flow as I talked about earlier. Making right just with multiple passes, working right to left on your screen. Ku with a nice find. Lauren Gadu, member of the U20 national team, so just a high school student, but miscommunication on the reset. Put it to space. Weatherford didn't anticipate it. And a chance for a sixth break in this first half. Egan Griffith shoots and scores! Laura Forbes makes it 7-zip for Melvin. Love the accent there, Evan. Former Heads of State player Laura Forbes with the grab. And 7-0. Yes, if you're tuning in, it's 7-0 for Ellipsis right now from Melbourne. Just pouring it on here in Ohio. And it's looking like Riot, Evan, calling another timeout. They called one earlier, and it resulted still in some more breaks here. They called it at 5-0 or 4-0, excuse me. So they're still trying to find some resolve right now, but 7-0. What an amazing start. Six of the seven, or six of the seven goals have been breaks. Five of the six breaks have been one turnover and then a quick score. There was the one five turnover point that ended with Phillips hitting Georgie Egan Griffiths to the end zone to our right. But every other time, Riot has turned it and Ellipsis has punished them immediately. Ellipsis now six of nine on break chances in their O-line. They do have an O-line. We saw them in the first point of the game. They received and marched it down the field and scored easily. Uh, they're getting some good rest right now. This is wild. When you're an O-line, you like cheering on the D-squad, Evan, because you get to take a break, you grab some water. I know Cat Phillips had crossed over a couple of times. We'll see if they decide to put some more O-line players on for a couple of points. Trying to take half an unprecedented 8-0. As we see Egan Griffiths back on the field, responsible for two assists and a goal. And just really helping this D-line offense move right now for Ellipsis as we see uh, 
a little Washington uh, Huskies or Washington, we'll say Washington Huskies uh, hat sighting there yeah. on your screen. Amanda Kostick has coached Ellipsis in the past. Two of her bridesmaids play for Riot, and yet there's no mercy from the D-line engineer for Ellipsis. Kostick, a very great player at the University of Washington. And this has to be especially sweet for her, although perhaps a little bittersweet as well with some of her closest friends. She's getting beat down right now. Is it like playing against your sibling? You kind of take joy in it, Evan, but you also feel a bit bad. I'm not sure if that's the feeling right now for Caustic, but well, she'll we'll enjoy the out. bragging rights for a long time. Deep shot looking for Sharon Sow. Caustic called her the most athletic player she's ever met, and yet that throw still out of her reach. Ellipsis, can they go 70 yards into this crosswind and take half 8 0? Could that possibly happen? against the two-time reigning world champions. Sally, you on that matchup as well. Expect her to get involved here on the turn. Has done so a few times so far in this break train for Ellipsis. Stall count rising and a nice job by Eunice Chung making herself available. But that deep shot intercepted by Jamie Erickson. Here's Julia Snyder. One of the Riot veterans. Snyder feeds it downfield, nearly a block. Neil laying out, and then Neil may have gotten a piece of the reset. How about Mara Neal? Didn't get the layout, gets up, and then deflects the flick for the block anyway. Neal's gotten her hands on a couple discs here in this contest as a stoppage or a pick. And 8-0 is what Ellipsis is going for right now. We've seen their D-line offense been calm. They've turned it a couple times, Evan, but for the most part, looked pretty smooth in contrast to some of the offense we've seen from Riot. Floater intercepted. Lonnie Wynn. Here's Fan. And a heck of a layout snag by Yadama. Sal closing in, and Riot is on the board. Jamie Erickson snaps the string of seven straight ellipsis scores. And Riot avoids getting bageled at halftime. Barely. Right now, 7-1 the score. Erickson having played with Arizona Lawless last season. Has played for another mixed team, Dallas Public Enemy, in the past. And Neil, actually on that throw that Yadama picked up, got a, a bit of a piece of that. Wasn't enough to make it hit the ground. Yadama with a great concentration. But right now, if, that's, if you're right, that's what you want. Just get a the hold, not a smooth hold, but you got it done. Now get some of your D-line players out there. I know you've been crossing them over to O anyway, so everyone's been getting some touches and some time and try to get a couple breaks before uh, half if possible. Got to imagine there are a lot of Riot alumni out there watching this and just feeling a small sense of relief to see Riot get on the board and I'll get the D-line out there, see if, as you said, they can get a little momentum back. Charlie Eide is about ready to pull. And seeing what Ellipsis does on offense. We saw it on the first point. Riot put on a zone. Ellipsis was able to go through it down on that far side, the open side, putting it to the opposite corner in the end zone. See what they do here as they go in traditional person defense, does Riot. Prentice picks up and initiates. Here's Anush Kaboudri, the Canadian star. Itoyo back to Prentice, and now Cat Phillips. Phillips uncorks. Liv Carr runs out of room. This is your chance. If you're a Riot fan in the audience, you gotta love a turnover after scoring that hold. Looking like they're coming on horizontal stack set here, Evan, and 
See who, decide, who they decide to run their offense through right now as they try to get this break. Abby Hecko initiates. Prentice was there, but taken care of by Steph Lim. Sliding snag by Alyssa Kelly. And just as you were starting to feel the momentum building for Raya to execution error. It's been a couple of those in this first half and hoping to shake that off here. Phillips with an impressive one-handed grab near the sideline. Idy called Phillips out. It was right in front of us. I thought she was in, but I wouldn't say I had the best perspective. And she was in. Now that left foot coming down first. The right foot does go past the line, but based on what we saw, the left foot, we see Evan signaling in. See if they uh, listen to you there, Evan, or see your hand signals. Yeah, I mean, she was in. There is a video board. They looked at it, and it'll be ellipsis disc. I, I've learned through the years watching Cat Phillips, just doubting her is not a good idea, ever. Some players, when they feel that doubt from the media, from uh, you know some people up here in the booth or wherever they find it, that actually feels them a lot. So I feel like Phillips is one of those players, and a lot of those top players, that's what they get. They love the feel of the negative negativity and some of the hate, as you say. I, I don't even know if it's that as much as she's just earned the benefit of the doubt with everything she's done on the field. Tough grab there by Prentice, and a pick called. And Alex Prentice will get this one back. Prentice, another impressive player for the Aussie Crocs down in Alabama. Right in front of us, we got Casey Ikeda, the head coach, and Alyssa Weatherford, the 16-year riot veteran, just having a chat, a chat like Weatherford's had with her coach on the sideline during every game, but this one has to feel a lot different. So the pick brings it back for Prentice. Carol Ma throws the score. Phillips makes it 8-1 as Ellipsis takes half with a dominant statement. Phillips threw some assists earlier in this sec uh, first half, excuse me, and gets a goal on the board. And Ellipsis running away, at least with the first half, 8-1. Not something many expected. And right now at half, if you're Riot, got to have a dis good discussion and maybe just talk about playing free, uh, play maybe playing with less expectations and just going out and having fun out there. Playing with some flow, trying to string a, a couple points together is probably the key right now for them. Eight, eight goals, five turnovers for Ellipsis. One goal, 11 turnovers for Riot. Not a score many expected to see at halftime. It's 8-1, Riot trailing the Aussies. Well, for those who complain there aren't enough upsets in Ultimate, look at this score. Seattle Riot was the higher seeded team coming in, but the two-time reigning World Ultimate Club champions are trailing 8-1 at the hands of Melbourne Ellipsis. The Aussies in control. 
Hannah Pendleberry is standing by with Alyssa Weatherford, the longtime leader for Seattle Riot. Hannah, take it away. Hannah Pendleberry here with Alyssa Weatherford from Seattle Riot. Alyssa, it's been an interesting start to this matchup, <laughs> yeah. but taking us a little bit of a focus outside of this match, the um, Tempest Western Ultimate League team from Seattle did have an undefeated season back in the spring. What do you think that sort of format, that division has helped for you with as a team, but also the women's community at large? I think the biggest thing for Seattle is I think we have a lot of ultimate players and we have a lot of t mixed teams and single gender teams and all these different uh, things. And it was one of the first times that a lot of women from all over the city had played together. So it was just a really awesome opportunity. And I didn't play, but I did watch some of the games. And it, and I think it also made a difference of like, there were people who had, had never played women's club um, and or hadn't in a really long time. And I think there's a lot of people that are like, oh, like this is different. Like, do I like it more? Do I not like it more? Like, it was just like a, it's like a cool experience for a lot of players. And I think it made a difference of like, who came to tryouts for Riot this year compared to last year. Awesome. And so obviously last time you did win the big show. So coming into this season and certainly this championships, it's a bit of a different, more explorative vibe for you guys over at Riot. So how have you mentally approached this tournament? I think the thing is we came up and had kind of a values discussion. And I think we're not we're trying to really not think about like expectations of our team and really believing in the people that we have right now. And like the people we have right now is like the exact combination of people that we want and need on our team. And I think that is what we are really focusing on. And like, how do we grow together with a group of people that like some of have played Tempest together, but like really the vast majority of the team hasn't played more than two seasons together. Um, and just really coming back to like us and doing what we can do and like not paying too much attention to the score. Well, we won't pay any attention to this goal. Good luck in the second half. It's been a pleasure to watch the first one. And yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens the next. Back to you up in the booth, Evan. Yeah, thanks, Hannah. I'm not sure Alyssa had the same pleasure in watching that first half. But uh, look, she has been synonymous with this Riot program. She first tried out in 2006, made the team in 2007, has been a cornerstone, but has not experienced many halves like this. It's 8-1 in favor of Ellipsis. Second half coming up from Worlds. have seen a lot of positive change around a whole range of important issues and some things remain reassuringly unchanged like the spirit of our game ultimate is 50 years young and still a perfect circle of fair play athletic pursuit and camaraderie in fact Ultimate was a social network. Before social networks even existed. Respetamos nuestras diferencias. And understand the value that they add. The revolution of the disc in flight continues to prove that there's nothing we can't achieve when we pull together. Long live Ultimate. Larga vida Ultimate. Long live Ultimate. We are back on a breezy Sunday afternoon here at the World Ultimate Club Championships. And if you're wondering whether the score tempered the Seattle halftime dance party, don't be silly. They were still dancing at their tent. Some of our media team joined in, despite the fact that they have one goal and 11 turnovers in a very forgettable half of Ultimate if you're Riot. Although perhaps it's something they'll be looking to learn from because clearly they're are some growing pains that need to be worked out here, Theo. 
Yeah, we see Ellipsis uh, 6 out of 10 on break chances here. And if you joined us for the halftime interview, Alyssa Weatherford talking about not thinking about expectations and just focusing on the team that they have here. Um, yet to generate a clean hold as well. So the one offensive point they had, there was a turnover. So as you mentioned, Evan, they were loose on the sides. Our broadcasting brings some lighthearted fun for them. And I think that's what they're going to have to keep doing right now in this half. Can't really look at that scoreboard to the right or left and just focus on making some plays, making that flow happen that uh, seemed to be lacking in some of their offensive points there that led to uh, some short field turnovers and ellipses going on that break run. Well, it's going to be interesting here in the second half. One, I'm curious if Ellipsis can maintain its composure with such a wide margin and, and play as efficient and effective as we saw in the first half when they were, for the most part, clinical with the disc. And for Riot, I mean, as you said, it's just about doing the little things and completing passes, and finding the next pair of open hands. Sometimes in, in situations where there's drops or things like that, you start to get in your head. Uh, didn't really see any players tossing on the side there at half. And just decided, electing to sit under the tent and, and stay cool right now with some of the heat, along with the wind that's coming down. Abramovich shoots it. Rodenberg denied! Meehan with an insane block! Just when I was about to say that's the hold Riot needs to get things going. A couple of throws. A block comes through the back. Lira Meehan making the play. I mean, it's early, but I, I, it's hard to fathom there are going to be too many better defensive plays than that this week in Ohio. That was sensational. Meehan in her last year as a medical student at the University of Melbourne. And playing ultimate for a decade and a half. And wow, that was a memory right there. Getting the block on a nicely thrown disc by Abramovich. Unable to connect on the huck the other way. And Riot will get another chance to hold. Throw just needed a little more float there for the receiver to run onto. But if your lips is making Riot work the full length. The 70 yards to try to punch in this hold here and have yet to get a clean one. Abramovich blocked but also fouled apparently. Neil the mark there. Perhaps pleading her case. Here comes the game advisor. Uncontested foul. All smiles. Seeing a lot of the hand signals as well from both teams, and that's what you get at this World's Tournament. Different languages being used and great way of communicating. So excited to see that throughout this tournament. Not too many language barriers in this game. Not however. this one specifically. Lim had to adjust to avoid contact there. Back to Weatherford. And the reset off Heidi's hands. Two of Riot's veterans there unable to connect on the dump. Meehan picks up, and there was a call right as she was releasing. But they just hit the ground, so I believe this will be a turnover. Unless there was also a foul on the throw. We haven't seen that signal. Certainly not a foul on the throw. So what's the call? And it's a turnover. turnover. I think she heard the pick call and tried to holster. Okay. And it just came out of her hands awkwardly, and unfortunately, with the rules of ultimate as they are, that's a. Tough break for the Aussies. Definitely came out wobblier than she wanted and just hit the ground. So now, Riot with the veteran Weatherford to pick up, see if they can stem the ship here. Abramovich. Oh, 
out of the reach of Weatherford. And that flow still coming hard at times for Riot. A couple of these reset passes not landing to where these targets want to be. And it's been a struggle so far for Riot. One of the things, Theo, about a tournament like this, so many fields, so many teams, so many relationships, and regardless of teams trying not to have their own internal expectations, what's it going to be like for the word of mouth, for this score to just gradually make its way across the complex? You know, Evan, Wait, it probably eight, starts... 8-1, Riot was up 8-1, right? They took yeah. half, no, they, they were taken to half 8-1. And they were down seven to nothing. And here's the third chance for Ellipsis to break this point. Tracy Chong. Throwing into the teeth of the crosswind. This is Mara Neal. Nicely floated for Alex Patterson. And then she just did not have enough air underneath it. Seeking Pena Preston in the middle. And then Riot turns it again. Idy looking for Abramovich. That's seven turns now on the point. And a timeout taken by Ellipsis. Evan, they said enough is enough with the turns. Let's settle things down, call that turnover. And you were mentioning that word of mouth. I, I feel like it will start word of mouth as players start to meet and start to maybe buzz around on Twitter or other social media feeds where they see the score line and helps teams realize that any game, I know often even that one versus five seed, Blueberry's putting up 13 on Riot. Anything can happen at a tournament. It's not more truer than here at Worlds. Well, that was certainly a sign about Riot's place as a number one seed. You know, the, the number one seed at Worlds, if they're going to win a national championship, probably isn't going to only win by two against the five seed in their pool. Of course, we don't know. Things change. Certainly a very different Riot team. Let, let's talk about Ellipsis. Steve Wright, he last played at a Worlds event in 2014 in the mixed division, but he has really... Uh, committed a lot of himself commuting from Tasmania to Melbourne every few weeks to coach this team in the lead up to the tournament and he might be a prophet with his point that a non-North North American team could win this thing because look Brute Squad and Phoenix are both going to be very good obviously Fury from San Francisco this has been the event that they have not won in quite some time but uh, between Revo and Ellipsis, Sixers, who knows, after a finals appearance, the last time we saw them in 2019. How, how, what do you expect from, as a proud Canadian, what do you expect from Sixers? You know, Evan, I can't let my homerism show too much. I know for those who watch the World Games, Canada not finishing as high as they would have liked, and a few of those World Games players missing for the Sixers here at this tournament. So we'll see how they do. They're playing Yaka on the adjacent field to us. Impressive win for the Mud team last night over traffic. And there's the break. You said it. They called the timeout. They said enough was enough. And Australia celebrates another break. The seventh of the game. Sometimes a quick chance for you to regroup allows you just to take a breath and settle your nerves down a little bit or even rest and get some water with the heat coming down. And what pays off for them? Excuse me, Theo, what, what must that goal have been like for the, the parents of Tracy and Julie Chong, the sisters collaborating on that score to put Ellipsis in front 9-1? to one. I'm sure just as exciting seeing them also play, as you mentioned, the U24s in 2019 in Heidelberg, Germany. Hopefully many of the parents of the Australian players watching back at home, we know it's early for you, and we appreciate the wake up enjoying Ulti World's coverage, the free game of the day. If you want to watch more of Ulti World's coverage, you can subscribe and see all the games, Evan. You hear more of Evan, you hear more of myself and our other talented broadcasters, our production team killing it as well. 
making us sound good, making things look good as well there. It's going to be one heck of a week. Been looking forward to it for a long time, especially with WUGC getting canceled in 2020. Big pull unleashed by Anushka Beaudry. Riot centers to Spalding. And another quick Riot giveaway. Not sure I've ever seen Riot look this out of sorts collectively. And it's 10 to 1. Panya Preston from Beaudry. It's not just that Riot's giving up these turnovers. That's one part of the story, Evan. The other part is Ellipsis defensive offense is punishing these short field turnovers by going right away, attacking and making things happen. They're poaching off of the cutter on the, the far side. They're able to get the block Spalding, not seeing it, and then attacking right away. This is the pressure you want. And if you're Steve Wright and the coaching staff, you want to just continue this, push the pedal, and just, I know this is their second and last game of the day, Evan, but rest is important for this long week. And you know some more tough matchups are coming up. Well, this was expected to be the toughest matchup in pool play. It has turned to be something very different. And it, it, it's something that will be discussed in the days ahead, and we'll, we'll see how good this Ellipsis team actually is. I mean, they're, they're playing great right now. We're seeing a ruthlessness after the turn, and their O-line has been nearly flawless too. But uh, Riot has been a, a few levels below, a significantly different level than we were hoping we'd get from them, thinking that this could be a potential classic early pool play game at World. So, And as we get into those power pools where those top other teams from the pool are crossing over and matching up with Ellipsis, that's when they'll get their test. Uh, finishing ninth last time here and trying to improve on that finish. I know they were seeing that 9-13 to 13 category and hoping for a uh, more of that and you know the the profit aspect that you mentioned of steve right he talked about taking away the first world look and we saw that on the last point so yep. clearly their game plan is working to a t at least so far that's a great point riot centers to crystal coup here's hecko hecko had the one layout block which was impressive but other than that we really haven't seen her with a chance to get going Palmer back for Koo. Everyone calls Steph Lim Slim, so she's got Slim on the back of her jersey. To Hecko. Ellipsis has not backed off the pressure defensively. And they continue to be stride for stride. And Hecko with a nice job shaking her defender, Palmer. And Riot able to convert Hecko to Gadu. That is a very youthful connection for two homegrown Seattle products, Hecko and Gadu. Gadu also going to be suiting up. Not that long from now, Evan, for the US U20 team. So excited to see what they do there in Poland. And uh, you mentioned that youth movement. We know there's some veterans on this squad, but you're seeing some of the youth right there. And uh, Heko kind of running things on that point. We saw the highlight reel play earlier in the game and want to see more from number seven as this game progresses. Heko, an alum of the U20 team, that won gold for the USA in 2018. Then. A year later, she was in Perth playing with the U24 team. I believe she was the only high schooler on that U24 U.S. national team. In her words, she said it was surreal to be a high schooler playing alongside someone like Dina, who had just, if you remember, dominated college nationals, winning a title for UC San Diego. And the catch. Uh, can I call it the catch? Which one? Because there were a bunch of them, but I know what you're talking about. 
Highlight she, she real place. She had two quote unquote catches on the very last point. Defeating Jack Verju's Dartmouth team. Spalding with the pull. It's just the third O point of the game for Ellipsis. They had the one clean hold to start, and then they had the one turnover, dirty hold, the last point of the first half. Ma shooting it long into traffic, and it's caught in a crowd by Weatherall. Weatherall with the concentration. Play, was scheduled to play for the New Zealand mixed team in 2020 before it was canceled. A couple players in the area, but things, you know, the bounce is just going your way when you're winning, and sometimes those things happen. Good concentration as... Riot trying to get there, but that's the clean hold that we've been talking about. Second goal for Eva Weatherall. One of the first names that Steve Wright mentioned when I asked him before the game. Aside from your six World Games alum, alums, who should we have our eyes on? And Weatherall, big receiver on the O-line. Experienced ultimate mind, coached the New Zealand U24 team a few years back. And this has been, despite the score, it has been really impressive to watch what Ellipsis has done. A, a bunch of highlight reel plays, including the block from Mian, which I think is the play of the match so far on that Dion Rodenberg. Neil getting involved on a couple plays as well, almost a near block on the far side when Yudama caught it. So Ellipsis making things happen on defense. There's been some unforced turnovers, Evan, but they have generated a lot of defensive pressure as well, and we can't uh, understate that. Weatherford unleashes. Will it hang in? Abramovich runs out of room, and it was smacked down out of bounds by Simmer Dollywall. Meehan. Range right back to Meehan. It's a heck of a throw. Around the poaching Weatherford to Chong. And here's Preston. Clinical disc movement. Putting on a platter to the end zone. And Meehan does it again. Everything coming up, Aussie. 12 to two. Evan, you mentioned the poach from Weatherford that didn't result in a block, and from that point on, things just broke out onto that far side, and Lips is able to get through and just continue to add to this lead, getting a break here in this second half. Another nice throw from Eunice Chung. The ninth break for Ellipsis. You get nine breaks in a game, you're very likely to win, Theo. I know this is your first world championships, but that's a, a nugget for you to learn from. I mean, you gotta, you know, you're right, Evan. It's my first world championship. You've done many, so I gotta learn from the pros right here, Evan, so I do appreciate well, these that. These are the important nuggets. To I gotta write them all down, you know, in my yeah. notebook that I got beside me. The, uh, the most important things, if you get nine breaks, you are almost certainly going to win in a particular game. Obviously, this is the very start of the season for these American clubs. I mean, the U.S. Open is in a couple weeks. Unfortunately, there'll be no women's division at the U.S. Open because so many of the top women's teams are here. It's going to be fascinating to see how Riot bounces back from this, not only this week, but heading into this fall. And there was hope. I mean, I think from the general ultimate community, there was hope. 
with Abby Hecko and Icky Elmi and Lauren Gadu and Sharon Sow and other strong mixed players like Abby Abramovich coming over like this riot team that was clearly rebuilding they could be back and in the mix for semis it's a long way between now and October so I'm not going to count them out but it'll be fascinating to see if they can actually look like a different team in August September and October than they look here today because right now it is a one-sided beatdown the onslaught continues on the huck to Pena Preston and the 11 seed ellipsis has an 11 goal lead over Seattle Riot. We talk about how they don't let up the gas on defense, Evan. It's the same on offense as we have discussed on the broadcast because they're just punctuating with Hucks, really hurting these turnovers. And we're gonna get a look right now, Evan, at some turnovers here from Riot. Riot fans may want to avert their eyes. Yes, look away if, if you're from Seattle right now. But if you're in Australia watching, you're going to want to maybe keep this in uh, your photographic memory and just really take a look. Phillips getting involved there on a popped up throw. And uh, just things not going the way of Riot, to say the least. What if we're trying to put up that huck earlier and Dollywall coming over for the block? Impressive. Meehan's block, even more impressive that we saw earlier. And a timeout being called from Riot. The score and the way it is, Evan. Going to have to just continue to to maybe talk about some positivity with the team as they're huddling up, getting a good look from our production crew as we switch views over to Ellipsis. Very different body language from one huddle to the other, that's for sure. Yep. Understandably so. We got to get a camera on Amanda Kostic in the handshake line too, because that's going to be interesting as she sees a lot of the players that she's both competed alongside and against in Seattle, players that she's coached coming up through the University of Washington. Wow. And the circle after, they do decide to do a spirit circle, which is a big part of Worlds, uh, the Ultimate Club Championships. We'll see who Caustic sits or stands beside and what the conversation is. Well, that'd be very interesting. And for Ellipsis, you want to close this out. If you can win 15-2, that continues to send shockwaves through the tournament. Don't want Riot to get a few couple points and really get their legs underneath them a little bit there. So right now, Ellipsis trying to punctuate these two next points and uh, finish it off. Ellipsis still will have two pool play games left after today, including against the three seed in the pool from Colombia and also against the New Zealand team Blueberries that took this Riot team to the brink. But certainly Ellipsis with a convincing performance. If they win pool F, they'll be crossing over into the power pool with the first and second place teams in pool D. That is likely to include Raleigh Phoenix, and I, I watched a little bit of their game earlier today. Aside from all the college talent that has come up through University of North Carolina and NC State, Jesse Jones is healthy again as we see another riot turn. And that Phoenix team is also added. Well, hang on. Oh my goodness. Why not? Laura Forbes skies the crowd. It is 14 to 2, and the dream continues for Ellipsis here against the reigning champs. Beaudry with the put there, talking with Coach Steve, right? Beaudry has been practicing with the team when they were in the U.S., and having her on this squad just adds more firepower. The 2017 Ulti World Breakout Player of the Year in the women's division and club for the Toronto Sixers. And this is like a and we professional see team against a high school team all of a sudden. That first row turnover as well, just tough to see. Uh, you can see the body language after the turnover just really down. And of course, you're down 14-2, Evan. It's hard to just stay positive. I know teams want to talk about positivity and the positive energy, but 14-2 is tough for that to happen. Good reminder that you never know what you're going to see when you show up to the fields. It's also a good reminder to tune into every stream, Evan, because that's part of it. You see, like, oh, the, this team, you never know what game you're going to get. And we have a couple more streams coming at you at 5 o'clock, so make sure you tune in for those. 
Uh, you can, of course, subscribe to Ulti World to find all that footage. Five o'clock, matchup. Just under an hour away. Now it's game point here for Ellipsis on defense. And Elmi floats it. Sao comes up with it. Elmi for Snyder. Rachel Bradshaw had it go off her fingertips. And it appears there was a call. Meehan was looking at Bradshaw most of the way and, and turned around when the sideline was able to get the up call going. So when you're face guarding like that, your sideline can help you. That will allow you to turn and, and try to make a play here as we hear their discussion. I think they I think you missed the replay. But you can ask, they all watched it, so do you want to ask your teammates for perspective? Do you think I'd push? They're not looking at the replay as it airs again. Certainly a little okay. forearm to the back there. So accepted? Yeah. Uncontested foul. So come on, on one. Not the same intensity of a conversation perhaps as if it was 14 all. Not to say it. Call shouldn't be the same either way. Almy resets for Snyder. Spalding breaks free and lunges for the score. Spalding been playing for 17 years. Uh, EMT by day, playing for Riot by night. And comes down with the sliding grab. Riot, third goal of the game. And now Ellipsis, your chance to hold, get a clean hold for the victory here. If you're Riot, get a couple breaks. Push Ellipsis a bit as they march through this tournament. As crazy as it may seem to say, that was an important point for Riot. I mean, their first turnover free hold of the entire game. Something for Casey Ikeda and the other leaders to talk about as they get ready for their Monday matchups. Still see some smiles from the coach there as he walks back to the sideline talking with veteran Alyssa Weatherford. A lot of smiles. You're at Worlds. Yeah. This is amazing. We haven't had this for a long time. I know you were in Alabama, Evan, but a lot more teams and players here. This is a completely different feel in every way. But some similar personnel, of course, for the Australian Ellipsis team with six of the seven members of the female matching side of the Crocs, Mish Phillips, Playing with Revo. Another contender. Well, there's no doubt about that. Out of bounds pull will set up Boudry right around midfield. In fact, she'll be beyond midfield. That just never came back in. So virtually at the reverse brick. Boudry, one throw for Cat Phillips. And it's over her head and off the hands of the second effort. And Liv Carr couldn't be the hero. Ellipsis going to have to play a little defense here. Face a little resistance right now. See if their uh, offensive defense can lock down. I mean, they've had a couple turnovers, but that yep. really feels like the first hiccup of the game for Ellipsis. And the huck the other way into the grass. Well, for those who didn't wake up early in Melbourne who are going to wake up to this result, do a double take when they refresh their browsers with the scores. Perhaps watching the game and reliving this Australian performance. Coming in on five. And for both teams, as they go back and watch this, they're going to have things to take away, especially for, well, for Ellipsis, they're going to have a lot of good things to take away, but still some things they can tighten up, right? And uh, teams always wanting to grow and learn. I think Ellipsis will definitely do that. 
Phillips shooting for Carr, the layout just shy of the end zone. Heck of a grab. Back to Ma. Prentice, dump swing perfection. And a brilliant overall performance from Ellipsis, one of the best performances they've ever had. 15 to three over the reigning WUCC champion Seattle Riot. And a statement made from the women from Melbourne. A statement is right, Evan. Coming out hot, getting that hold and multiple breaks to start this game, taking advantage of Riot's turnovers, both forced and unforced, and never really letting up. I don't know about you, Evan, but there was never a point in time where, especially when it got to like six and seven, where Riot seemed to have that flow or that ability to come back. I know they do, but it just didn't seem like that was happening. Uh, throughout this contest, Ellipse is not really letting that happen. It was 7 0. It was 10 to 1. And it ends 15 3. Staggering. Riot loses at Worlds for the first time in a dozen years at a WUCC. You mentioned this earlier, Evan. It'll be interesting to see as the very large field complex uh, discusses and finds out about this result, what they think about it. I'm sure, Twitter and uh, social media will be ablaze with what happened. Ellipsis coach Steve Wright just took a look up to us in the booth and gave a little wink. He, he knew that they were capable of this, although this 15 3 was incredible. I don't know if he, he predicted 15-3. He never said that, Evan, but he predicted the win. But 15-3 is just amazing. Well, before today, Amanda Fung's career highlight was when Ellipsis Mixed won the U.S. Open in 2015. Got to wonder if today sets a new bar. Amanda Fung is standing by with Hannah. Tenderby here on the sideline with Amanda Fung, a seven-year veteran of the Ellipsis club scene. Amanda, congratulations on an excellent performance. We know you guys came out strong this morning against Fusion with that 15-7 win. Was there anything different in the game plan for this matchup against Riot? I think we just tightened the screws. I think we knew we had the level of discipline and intensity required to take out the game, and we all just played our role. We've had a big emphasis this season on just nailing the basics, nailing the discipline, working together as a team, and I think you're really seeing that pay off now in our um, you know, multi-month campaign preparation. Excellent. So in terms of then, we know your Aussies are renowned for your excellent scouting game. Are there any teams here in particular that you're really looking forward to watching? Look, we love watching all Frisbee. We've got a lot of Frisbee frothers on our team who just watch teams, you know, left, right and centre in their own time. We've also got a lot of good relationships with other club teams. I think a lot of us have played with a lot of other global teams. So, for example, Pangolins hanging out there, shout out. Woo! Um, a lot of the US teams, like the Sixers, we've got Noosh from, you know, Cat Phillips has played for them. A couple of us have played like the UK team. So just anyone and everyone, we're just excited to be here again. Fantastic. And with the World Games athletes on your roster doing that mental preparation, is there anything that they've brought to the table that has impacted your ability to focus coming into this championship? I think they've just inspired the team. I think just watching, we had in Ellipsis six out of our seven croc women were from our club which we're immensely proud with and i think they brought just that grit and that energy to the team um, they obviously needed a bit of a break coming from world games and playing you know their butts off but i think they've really brought that intensity and energy that the team needs to really um yeah close it out i can't agree more it was inspirational to watch those athletes and all of your team out here on the fields today good luck for the rest of your games we'll hope to maybe catch you on another stream but that's it for us now we're going to throw back to evan and theo in the booth Pleasure. I hope we meet again, Amanda. Incredible performance from Ellipsis. Seattle Riot won Worlds in Lecco in 2014 and then repeated here in Cincinnati in 2018. But it is a very different Seattle squad here today. They fell behind 7-0. And the highlights never ceased from the Aussies. 15-3. Domination from Ellipsis as they make the statement here in Pool F for Theo Wan, Hannah Pendlebury, and our entire crew.
Evan Lepler saying so long for now. And congratulations to Melbourne's Ellipsis. They are a team to watch as we head towards the business end of the week here at Worlds.